we open up our scripture, we're finding the 11th chapter of Paul's letter to the Hebrews. It'll be verse 1 to 3 and then 8 to 16. We, we have the chance to look again at Paul's classic definition of faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. We move down to verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. <clears throat> Therefore, from one person, one as good as dead, Descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable as the grains of sand in the sea. All of these died in faith without having received. Excuse me, the pages are practically glued together. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. When we were little, did the grown-ups ever ask us to hold still? Were we wiggly at school? Were we wiggly at church? Were we wiggly at the grocery store? True confession, this pastor was once a wiggly little kid. More than once, Mom had to say, do you see that square? Do you see that green tile right there? Its name is Scott. Do you see that tile over there? Its name is Mark. You boys stand on those squares and do not move. When we get to the next aisle, you're going to get a new square. Today we have a word to help us with our wiggliness. The word is assurance. Did you know that assurance is a hyper word? In the Greek language, assurance comes from the word hypostasis. Hypo means hyper or super. Stasis means standing or staying put. So hypostasis means hyper standing or super standing. Stasis means, with stasis meaning standing or staying put, so it means that we're to do a super job of standing fast. We do a good job of standing still, knowing God is there. It means we are not wiggly with God. It means we are not wiggling all over the place spiritually. It means we know God is God. We understand the, the scripture, be still and know that I am God. We know that God is the God of heaven and earth. We know that God is our God. When we invite Jesus into our heart, we know that God moves in to stay. We are able to be hyper standing. With the assurance of faith, we stand fast with God. Assurance is not just about hyper standing. Assurance is also about moving. Faith is portable. It can move with us. Abraham had faith. He had the assurance with God, so Abraham was willing to get up and move in faith. Back then, Abraham did not have any Google Maps to follow. Abraham did not have any GPS system. There were no free travel brochures from a travel agent. Abraham's travel agent was God. 
faith was Abraham's map. Paul uses Abraham as an example of resting in God's assurance. Paul talks about moving in faith as the search for our spiritual homeland. Twice in this scripture, the word homeland shows up. The Greek word for homeland is patrida. It is based on the root word for father. It means we are looking for our father place, our family place, our home place. Paul says we are all like Abraham, looking for our spiritual home with God. Paul is saying earth is not really our home. God is home. Heaven is home. Planet earth is a temporary address. Christian comedian Mark Lowry has a great quote on this. On planet earth, we keep thinking we are human beings having a spiritual experience. We are actually spiritual beings having a human experience. We repeat what Christian writer C.S. Lewis says, if I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy. The most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. The assurance of faith is not necessarily about feeling at home in this world. The assurance of faith is about being at home with God. What does it mean to be at home with God? Earth is just a taste of what home can be like. At its best, our earthly home can be a safe place with faith, family, and favorite people. We can eat, sleep, rest, and pray in relative peace. But we know planet Earth can be unstable. Life has storms and droughts. Life has politics and economics. We have good kings and bad kings. We have good crops and bad crops. Even though home can be a good, safe place, there are times when the instability of planet Earth can make us feel uncomfortable in the safety of our own home. Now we started out this message talking about wiggling and holding still. This leads to the story of preaching professor, Reverend Dr. Fred Craddock, who preached in Oklahoma and Tennessee. In the middle of his career, he was forced to hold still. He had come down with Gillian's beret. That's the same disease that slowed down Father Michael Junkus, who wrote, on eagle's wings, you know, he will raise you up on eagle's wings. That, that pastor, same disease. And so at any rate, there lies Reverend Dr. Fred Craddock in his hospital bed. The disease has taken him to the place where he cannot wiggle. He cannot walk. He cannot uh, pick up a spoon to eat his dinner. It's bedtime. The nurse comes in and puts his bed rails up on high. What are you doing that for? Fred asks, you know I can't walk. Of course the nurse knows Fred cannot walk. His disease causes paralysis. The nurse says, yes, but you might move. For Fred, he had never heard of Gillian's beret before in his life. He was worried he might not get better. This was not the nurse's first case. She knows that most people with Gillian's beret do get better. They start the wiggling, they start the moving again. What's the difference between the preacher and the nurse? The nurse has the assurance of the unseen possibility that Fred will get up and walk again someday. Because Fred was a rookie at Gillian's Beret, he did not have the assurance yet. Just like Fred, this is our first walk through life. Planet Earth tries to fool us into giving up hope and to quit trying. But we have a great physician who can see our chart and who knows we can walk with the Lord. We can find a way home with him. Amen.